Hello and welcome to the Reading Strategies video. I have a presentation I'm going to talk through. And it's called, What Do You Do If You Can't Understand a Reading? Well, do you dive in or try to work around it? One of the things you might think is just skip it. Well, don't skip it. That's irresponsible. So if you're just going to skip it, you don't need to watch this video. All right. The thing is that professors are going to assign you readings, and some of them are going to challenge you. It's college. That's normal. Um, and the idea is that you need to figure out how to get some understanding, even if you don't understand all of something that is assigned. Um, and you need to remember that you don't know everything that you need to know, even if you have a teacher in your family or a close friend who's a teacher. Um, there is a difference that I want to point out between understanding something and having a robust understanding of something, a deep understanding. Um, and here you can get an understanding by kind of going around a reading. To get a really robust understanding, you're going to have to dive in and get into it. So there are a few things that will be helpful as, as a future teacher. You need to think about why you are understanding a reading because you're going to have students that you have to help understand readings, um, even if it's a math textbook. Okay, looking up words isn't enough. Vocabulary is one of three pieces that you need to understand an article. Um, vocabulary, uh, obviously words can trip you up or reduce your fluency. Syntax, the structure of a sentence as well, it could be too complex. You might have too many clauses, and it'll do the same thing. It'll trip you up. The other thing is, even if you understand the vocabulary and the structure, sometimes you still don't understand because you don't get the context. You have to have some background knowledge or know what's being talked about. So the strategies that I want to talk about are related to those issues, okay? Um, because you're gonna have future students that you're gonna teach them, you will teach them to read, you need to teach thyself, teacher. So, do you dive in and go around? Now, diving in sometimes might feel like beating your head against the wall. You can look up words, you can reread. Some of these things are called close reading strategies. Close reading strategies are strategies that you will need to teach your students for sure. Um, there are pros and cons when you have a reading you don't understand to beating your head against the wall. Sometimes, as I said, you can look up words and you still won't understand the reading. You can reread it and it'll still seem like Chinese to you. And that's okay. Um, so that can be a problem. Uh, the benefit, of course, of diving in deep is trying to build that robust understanding. Now, what about going around? What do I mean by that? Well, you might read something similar or watch a video on the topic. These days, the authors of articles uh, go on lecture circuits. Maybe someone recorded a video and put it on YouTube. Okay, These things can really help you get the context that you need to understand what the article that you're assigned to read is about. So that's the, the benefits. The, the lack here, the con, if you're going around is you can miss out on the robust understanding if you only go around the reading. Um, so what I say is you need to go around so that you can dive in. You can get all the positives out of these strategies in an efficient way. So do some videos, read some other articles, summaries, look at images on the Google image search, and then you can dive in. Once you know the context, what the author is usually talking about, then you can use the close reading strategies to help you. So here's some ideas for going around. YouTube, obviously. You can find other articles that are similar, um, ones that are focused on practitioner. That's you, the teacher. You're a practitioner rather than a researcher. Um, sources like Edutopia, Scholastic, Education Week, the American Federation of Teachers. These are things that you can put with the topic of the article into a Google search and maybe come up with some easier things to understand. You can often find summaries if you have a book 
that you were assigned to read a chapter of. Uh, you might find a, a summary on Amazon. You might find someone has read the article and written a blog post about it. And sometimes Sparks Notes exist. Okay. Um, Pinterest and Google Images are other places where you might find some things that can help you get a clear understanding. Obviously, sometimes the things that you'll find in Google Images are unrelated and or inaccurate. When you dive in, there's a few different strategies you can use looking up words. It's easier than it used to be when I was a student. Um, you read different speeds, read aloud and read silently. If you read fast, it might help you kind of get the gist. Because if you read slow, you can really get into the details. Reading aloud is a strategy that, that I use still when I'm reading a difficult reading. And then, of course, mixing it up sometimes maybe it'll help. Okay, one strategy is to read a reading like poetry. When you're reading it like poetry, what you're going to look for is the parts of it that you do understand, the parts that speak to you. That's the point of poetry, right? It's to give you some kind of thing that you connect with. Well, find what you connect with in a reading. Obviously, reading something twice can really help. Uh, it's amazing sometimes if you just barely missed it, you go back and you read it again. Okay, sometimes splitting sentences up helps. I'm going to show you an example for a reading that I assigned in my diversity course. I had some billings. It's a 1995 article called Towards a Theory of Culturally Relevant Pedagogy. Now, there's a lot of pieces in here that are difficult. And uh, so we're going to kind of run through what it might look like to use some of these strategies. The first one is to go to YouTube and let's see if this is going to work. Hopefully, y'all are seeing the screen. Oh, screen sharing is paused. Let's make sure this is correct. Okay, that shows the right thing. Okay, so as you see in a YouTube search result for Lads and Billings, culturally relevant pedagogy, I've got all kinds of videos. Okay, some of them are really long where it's her giving a lecture. Others are quite short. Here's eight minutes of questions. Here is something from Introduction to Cultural Relevant Pedagogy from Geneva Gay. She's a different author, but it might help you somewhat. Okay. Anyway, there's some other stuff related. There's an eight minute video. Anyway, these are things that you could watch instead of uh, trying to bang your head against the wall, trying to read something you don't understand. All right, in the next tab, I've done a search for Edutopia articles regarding culturally relevant pedagogy. It says culturally responsive teaching, so that, that should not throw you off. We should just understand it's not exactly the same thing. Okay, well, what does Edutopia have here? Hmm. All right, making SEL culturally competent, bringing a culturally responsive lens to a math class. Getting started with culturally responsive teaching. This is probably a really helpful thing to read before you read the Lads and Billings article. Now, let's see here. Okay, I did a Google search with American Federation of Teachers for some more videos that uh, might relate. And they might not. You know how the internet is. You search for something sometimes, it's all garbage. All right, that's loading too slow. You can check it out. Understand. So there's Sparks Notes, Cultural Relevant Pedagogy, and I got Wikipedia. Why not? Uh, this is from the National Council of Teachers of English. Yeah. All right. This is from Brown University, well respected, Ivy League. KIPP. Uh, I don't know about that. Oh, but look, this says toward a theory of culture. This mentions the article. Maybe it's good. All right. Okay. And then finally, I've got an image search. 
Okay, and one of the images on here, which is great, is this one, which is actually something that's kind of in the article from Gloria Ladson Billing. She talks about the difference between culturally responsive pedagogy and culturally relevant pedagogy. You can see some of the major components of each right here. So an image search can really give you a, a, a broad understanding, definitely not a robust understanding. All right, last thing we're gonna do is look at diving in. Now the diving in strategies are um, pretty obvious except for one of them. And it's the sentence structure thing. So we'll do that. Yep. Oh, let's see. Almost got it. There we go. All right, so I pulled a sentence from that article, which is pretty long and kind of difficult. It's a quote that's in there. Um, Can a person from an impoverished American minority background who, despite all prejudices, manages to get an education and study her own community, be equated with a member of a third world elite group who, backed by excellent schooling and parental funds, studies anthropology abroad, yet returns home for field work among the less privileged? So if you're trying to like break this sentence down, you have to look for prepositions. Okay, from is a preposition. You also have to look for things that are called positives, where you have a comma and then a comma. Okay, these things, so you say, can a person, and then you're like, okay, so this part right here, this is a prepositional phrase that relates to the person. Okay, can an American minority background person who, oh, here's more description of, Despite prejudices, this person manages to get an education and study her own community. Okay, so there's one person they're talking about so far that from an American minority background, they manage to get an education and study their own community. Okay, now here's a verb that splits this. Okay, so get the first part first. You got the American who Okay, this is the positive that means, okay, despite all the prejudices. So people in America who are from minority backgrounds encounter prejudices. So that's what that's about, okay? Then can that person, can a person be equated with a member of a third world elite group? Hmm, a member of a third world elite group. What do they mean here? Well. If you're talking, for example, in this case, about an African-American writer, Gloria Ladson Billings, let's say, then here you might be talking about a, a person from perhaps Nigeria who is black racially, but maybe their mom or dad was a government official. So that would make them part of an elite group, right? If you are that person, from Nigeria, and your mother or father is a government minister, you are going to have an excellent education and you're gonna have a lot of money, okay? And then this person, then this person they're talking about, this, that's just this example I made up, this son or daughter of a, a Nigerian government official studies anthropology abroad, that would mean in the United States, or maybe in Europe, or maybe who you knows, somewhere else, somewhere not in that country. Then they go home to their developing country to do field work among the less privileged people in the third world developing nation that do not have excellent schooling or money. Okay, so she, this is a question asking, can those two people be equated? All right, so you gotta find things that can break the sentence into pieces, no matter what the sentence is, so that you can make sense of it. That's all I got. 
Hopefully you find some of these strategies helpful and that you do the responsible thing as you are a future professional, as you are getting your money's worth, the courses that you're taking in college. And if you can't understand something, you gotta do it. Go around so that you can dive in. Good luck.